I know we were expecting some new developments this weekend, but some of them have failed quality control. Make sure you indicate what you'd like redeveloped via the workstation. Hey, what's going on, guys? Out of here. Welcome back to an episode of my F1 2018 career and episode number 16 today for the Russian Grand Prix. As you can see there, a car or engineers told us one uh, upgrade has failed on the car and is our engine power. So we do actually have our new set of brake upgrades for this weekend. So for the first time, we'll have to see if the brake updates new to the 2018 game really do make a difference on how the braking is feeling and in terms of the, the higher pressures you can maybe run without. Out, you know, inducing lockups because obviously if you go kind of past eighty-two percent, usually you're kind of gonna gonna start getting lockups pretty easily. But with these brake upgrades, maybe not the case. But you can see here a more important note is Carl has told us an email ahead of schedule about some rumors about an R and D reset, and this is gonna be actually a good thing maybe for us because it looks like reading into it, the only thing that he's saying that's rumored to be resetting is the reliability and durability of the cars, which is probably inevitable. I think every season I think that does reset anyway so basically in conclusion I think we're gonna be very very good in season two because it doesn't look like any part of the engine uh, chassis or the aero tree is going to get reset so we've got very very lucky there in this game if you don't know every single season there's a chance that one of the parts of the trees gets reset or multiple parts of the trees get reset and it's gonna and it's gonna be totally different for everyone playing so you might have uh, aerodynamics reset in the first season season into the second uh, another one of your friends might have chassis reset you can see with me I've locked out majorly because I've not got any reset apart from durability and reliability which I'm sure is something that gets reset anyway every single season I might be wrong on that but it makes sense if that does get reset every single season but we're going to get away with that nothing else going to reset we've spent so much money into the chassis side of this car that I was really worried that that was going to be thing typical me luck that that was the thing that's going to get reset and we're going to drop stone dead last almost but it looks like we're looking good and if other teams don't try and catch us up in terms of development rate at the rate we're developing we could really start to challenge the top guys properly next season. Now, we've, we've got lucky a little bit. Obviously, Singapore was a good example last race. We got a little bit lucky here and there to get right up to the top end uh, for, you know, a few little laps here and there. And even, you know, obviously, Monaco and, and previous races where we got managed to get podiums, myself, uh, old Magnussen. But I think next season now, with the development rate we've got from where we are right now, you've got to say, I think we should be able to actually have people on pace rather than the, uh, a kind of crazy strategy or a bit of a luck lucky kind of race where something's happened to other cars so we'll have to see how that progresses and uh, we've got to uh, work on fixing the engine uh, obviously that we uh, have a failed upgrade part for but we'll get to that after the race so let's go into practice then for the Russian Grand Prix. Here we are at the fascinating Sochi Autodrome in Russia for what is expected to be a compelling race weekend well it all begins today with practice. Now then, Anthony Davidson, there's been a lot of talk over the last few weeks about track limits. How much is too much when you're cutting corners and running wide? What are your thoughts on this? And do you, do you think we'll be seeing drivers pushing those limits this weekend? Well, I'd be disappointed if we didn't, frankly. If race control want to clamp down on drivers wandering off the track, then it's up to them to police it. As a driver, you're being paid to get your car around the circuit as quickly as possible, don't forget. So if you're not pushing those limits, if you're ignoring the advantageous line, then you're not doing your job properly. Now, I agree that, you know, we have these white lines there for a reason, and we do want to see those limits enforced, but for me, it's not a driver's responsibility to do So that. Russia is technically actually the first race I've recorded after coming back from Belgium to go to the to the Belgium We're Grand Prix. Obviously, you guys know I pre-recorded like five episodes. I also pre-recorded Singapore, but only did the commentary once I was back here in the UK after Spa. So this was actually the very first race I'd actually done after that. And after four days of not playing this game, I was very, very rusty. Practice was very much needed. I kind of got up to speed, but I'm actually good, not going to lie, being completely honest I'm not super confident about my performance in this episode so we're gonna have to see how it goes but it might be a damage limitation race for us here at Russia. Welcome back to Sochi we're about to be joining the action down in the pit lane as the cars get ready to embark on their qualifying runs. Now then Anthony Davidson you're not getting any younger but you have been involved in your fair share of qualifying sessions in a, an illustrious 30-year career. How do you deal with the pressure when you have that one chance to deliver a perfect lap? It's not so much about dealing with the pressure, it's more about how you approach the risk and just how much of it are you willing to take. 
you're constantly balancing the car on the edge of grip from braking, cornering and traction. And over the course of a lap, it's easy to get that balance wrong. And that's why achieving the perfect lap is almost impossible. As you say, I've been doing this 30 years now and it never gets any easier. Into Q2 then on the Hypersoft tyres, going straight away on the fastest tyre available this weekend, like I said. Not feeling that confident, little lock up there, and just I just want to get through the sessions, honestly. So just got to use the fastest tyre available, can't do much uh, clever with the strategy then. So through the final corner, and it is going to be Q1 for us, but you can see there, on my first attempt there, in on a, on a lap in anger, P14 versus Magnussen up in P4. Obviously a few people out of position due to tyres they've chosen, but uh, I need to massively find some time then in Q2. But definitely that Q1 one was a bit of a bogey lap in terms of uh, how much flat out uh, racing I was doing out there on the lap. Meanwhile now we go into Q2 then and uh, we're behind Lewis Hamilton actually getting a bit of a toe on the back straight but then getting hit with a tiny bit of dirt here. I mean I could you can't really tell too much on the video but I could definitely feel it in the wheel a little bit. Just a little bit put off as well by a car being so so close but also at the same time kind of gave me an option to follow his lines a little bit. It looks like Hamilton pulls a little bit to the inside uh, before swooping round to the outside for the brake zone. You can see a lot up on the front right that seems to be uh three lockups in uh, pretty much a span of a minute there in the video so clearly the brake uh, upgrades maybe i've gone a bit too much on the brake pressure overestimating how good my brakes will be but that does get us into q3 uh, three by the skin of our teeth there you can see it's so so close between myself and hulkenberg and also even the in entire um q2 knockout session it was close it was close and we just about get that there magnus and also through obviously as you would uh, assume i would say if i get through here at russia after not playing the game for four days i'll be stunned if magnus and did not so unlike singapore um, you know, we got through a lot better in, in qualifying. That was a bit of a disaster. And so now we'll see how it goes in a final top 10 shootout. Here you can see it's gone um, really gloomy for some reason. So it's uh, we've had a bit of a trend here in the last four episodes. I don't know what it is in, the, in this world, in this earth of F1 game of my 2018 career mode save. But it just seems to be uh, rather gloomy all the time in all of these episodes. Like, just never a lot of sun in, in the qualifying or the race. Uh, you know, we had Germany, had Italy, and so here we are in Russia. Obviously, Singapore, it's night time, so you can't have anything, but we come through for a very sloppy lap there in sector three. So I got I, I got so wide in the last two corners, especially the last one. I lost so much time there. And in turn one as well, I wasn't really too committed. So you can see I, I gained a bit of time there in uh, in uh, to turn two. I was about to say turn one, but it's turn two, but I'm just going to probably mistakenly call it turn one anyway. But uh, we lose a bit of time then through the left-hander, so maybe losing a little bit of speed maybe with the downforce I've got on the car. For the last corner, we gained time right at the end there. I did lose a lot. I think about I lost about two tenths in the brake zone and then gained it back on the exit of the corner. And so we get up into P7, which I will take. I am so surprised I got P7 there, but Magnussen out-qualifies us as I would have thought, but he's up into uh, P5 there. Hamilton had a bit of a mare and uh, he splits us has cars. So he's had a bit of a shoddy qualifying as well as Max Verstappen. So actually we can count ourselves lucky there that I even end up in P7 because it could have easily been uh, probably P8 at least or P9 if Verstappen and Hamilton had qualified a lot better. Um, so so we'll see how it goes in the race. As I said, not feeling too good, but so far qualifying has been delightfully better than I thought it would be around Russia. So uh, let's just go into the intro and then see how it goes on the grid. Welcome one and all to the Russian Grand Prix. We're just a stone's throw from the Georgian border here at Sochi as we get ready to begin the race that served up an absolute cracker back in 2015. A last lap collision between Kimi Raikkonen and Valtteri Bottas sparked controversy in that race, so let's hope the racing is just as tight today. Situated just three miles from the Georgian border, the 3.6 mile Sochi Autodrome has two notable overtaking opportunities into turn one and then turn 13. 18 corners in total here, 12 to the right and 6 to the left, and it's an average lap speed of around 130 miles per hour. Anthony Davidson is here once again for today's Grand Prix. Now I want to ask you about Valtteri Bottas. They need 8th or better to ensure they stay in contention for the championship. Anything outside that and their fate is no longer in their hands. The key now will be to keep in the right mindset. We've seen time and again that things go wrong if you just try and do the minimum. Not necessarily because of the pressure, but because it's different to your usual approach. They'll need to avoid that and stay focused today. We're almost ready to go then, and this is what the starting grid looks like for today's race. Sebastian Vettel will start on pole. 
Fantastic qualifying from the multiple world champion. And the engineer completes the front row. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Bottas, Perez, Kimi Raikkonen, and Hulkenberg, Hamilton, Ocon, Gasly, and Max Verstappen. Van Dorn, Stroll, Daniel Ricciardo, and Sorotkin, Ericsson, Sainz. They'll be starting further back after an earlier grid penalty. Kevin Magnussen and Charles Leclerc. Hartley and Fernando Alonso starts from the back of the grid. And with lights out just moments away, it's time to go down to the track. So as you can see by the grid intro there, we've got a pretty hectic grid now. And uh, so this rushing Grand Prix episode just got a bit more interesting in terms of what could happen in this race. Because we're now on the first row of the grid in second place alongside Sebastian Vettel. Due to what seems like all the AI taking their grid penalties at this race. Last year we had something similar where they took most of the penalties at Brazil and Abu Dhabi. So it looks like this time around in 2018 in the game in season one at least. Obviously it kind of changes season to season. But in the first season they all did it in Brazil last year on last year's game but this year it looks like Russia is the place where most of them are finding difficulties with the penalties obviously we've been managing it pretty okay but uh, yeah now it's, this going to be a very very interesting race here it's going to be a one stop though as Russia normally is kind of a straightforward one so I'm not kind of looking forward to that it might be a bit of a, a stalemate uh, kind of strategy in race in that kind of sense so I don't think you'll be getting as crazy as they did last time at Singapore but nonetheless from second place anyway you've got to say this is going to be a very interesting start to the Grand Prix at least and then we'll see where we go from there. So we're going to get into it then from the front row of the grid alongside Sebastian Metal in second place here for the Russian Grand Prix. Round number 16 of the 2018 Season 1 of Career Mode. Fiber lights are out and we're underway and it's a good initial start against Vettel there on ultra soft tyres there. Hyper soft obviously for us but then on the left hand side the Mercedes out of nowhere of Bottas comes through to try and overtake not only myself but also maybe Sebastian Vettel and then look, I look behind me I'm being swamped now by Raikkonen and then the Force India sends one down the inside. He's almost at the first place. Sergio Perez there. He gets it to second though. The Force India with a cracking start and a great dive there from Perez. Obviously the last time we saw a dive from Perez like that it was all the way back to round number one at the Australian Grand Prix when we started this career mode there. But a great send down the inside to overtake not only myself but also Bottas who got squeezed out on the left by Vettel Surprise Vettel still kept that really with ultra soft tyres with either hypers. Obviously, it just means that his tyres don't grip in as much straight away. But it does mean as we go on through this race, his tyres will feel better and better as ours degrade. And now you can see Bartas is around my outside there and he's got me. We're going to try and get him back though on the under the tunnel around the outside of the left handy. He's going to squeeze us quite hard into the curbing. I think that might have to be us giving up that position and just tucking him behind. Maybe now if I follow Bartas close enough, if he goes and uh, if he overtakes Perry now and goes for, goes for the move and they go side by side I might be able to nip it down the inside or around the outside of them depending on where they do it and I might be able to overtake both of them or at least just get Perez and basically use him to my advantage to get up back at, up into P3 but at the moment we're down to P4 from what uh, from what was second place on the front row now actually we're looking at uh, Holkenberg rather than forwards and Holkenberg is absolutely flying there in the run out down my inside there he's got all the speed in the world no DRS quite yet but even with some high in overtake mode on the ERS he's got me for chips and so on heavy fuel the car's not got too much race pace you know it might be good over one lap myself and Magnus in P5 and P7 it was on the road in quali but then in the race it might be a different story here I've got more downfalls once again kind of like the Singapore Grand Prix so I was kind of expecting maybe to be a little bit hounded on the straights but not this much by a Renault car of Holkenberg and he's got passes there I got a little bit easy on him on the right hander because I want to try and tuck in and maybe try and re-overtake him then on the next back straight and we get to that back straight I'm trying to do so we're an overtake mode on the ERS but instead of catching Holkenberg I'm now being overtaken by the Ferrari now of Raikkonen so I, I can't even make the moves that I'm wanting to to re-overtake cars because I'm just keep on getting overtaken by the next car along as Kimi has a big big lock up there and only now do I realize why I'm so slow we have had a bad we've had that's the only way I can really describe it it's been an atrocious decision making for me I have forgotten completely about my worn engine. I actually showed my worn engine at the end of the last episode, I'm pretty sure. And I said that we needed to watch out for it. And I clearly have not. I have completely forgotten about it. As I said, I'm going to use the excuse that this is my very first race back from my trip to Spa. So it just didn't cross my mind to change the engine part. And so, you know, I, I, who was I to know? Because in qualifying, it was all fine and dandy. I was up there, you know, not too far off Magnussen. And I just thought the pace I was losing to Magnussen was due to my driving, not the actual engine itself just being 
basically a Honda engine from 2016 it looks like, or 2015, because now uh, the Mercedes of Hamilton now is getting passed down the inside, and you can see clearly now, it's pretty obvious, now that you know my engine's bad, that why I'm losing all this time, every single straight out, every single acceleration zone, which... Russia has a lot of, it's a lot of 90 degree corners and just accelerating out of them. So more than ever now, this race has really turned into an actual damage limitation. Not just for my driving save, but also the actual car itself is not going to be helping me as much as it would do. Is now Raikkonen's made a huge mistake into turn one. And he's lost the place to not only the Renault, I think, of Hulkenberg, but Hamilton now is trying to go around the outside there. So Kimi, I think, was ahead of Nico, uh, but then just got it all crossed up into turn two. Did a bit of a Nico Rosberg from uh, 2015, was it? Or 2014, well, I think it was 2014. But they go down the inside then of Hamilton and get him back. He's been caught napping a little bit there, trying to overtake Raikkonen. He went really slow to turn three. I don't know what that was. And then there, I, I doubly don't know what that was. Uh, Ocon has really sent it, and he tried to overtake Hamilton and me. He's now still going for me. And so today, we've had Perez dive down the inside of turn one and turn two and do amazingly. Now, Ocon has just come out of nowhere, and he's just really got some great pace. Not only to overtake just me going slow, but he's done Hamilton, remember? Hamilton's still got a fine engine in him, and he's still got a fine car. And Ocon's just done him down the inside there, and he blocked us off quite well. And so I'm just now sitting duck. Hamilton's pass, and now... Pierre Gasly in the in the Toros Honda is actually going to try and overtake me. We defend from him a little bit. It's another lockup from Hamilton. So I don't know what is going on with the lockup centrals. I mean, I've had a break update and uh, other people are starting to lock up. I didn't know the update quite worked like that, making everyone else uh, lock up. But Gasly now has tried to go around my outside. I don't know how on earth he's found the grip to try that, but he has done. And he's going for it still into the second last corner. The Frenchman sends it down my inside. And I've just got nothing to answer for at the moment. Through the last corner, just going to try and fend it around the outside. But this is really not going well. This is this is a, a, this is a disaster. Singapore started off as a disaster and turned pretty good. This is going from bad to worse now. The, the McLaren of Van Dorn, I think that is, is trying to overtake us. Or it might be Fernando Alonso. Whichever way, we've got McLaren and Torosso haggling us now. I'm still fighting the Torosso Honda car. Obviously, Torosso may have had an update to this season, but still, the fact that the Honda engine is literally catching me for chips on the straight is, is an absolute joke at the moment. And now, uh, Van Dorn's going to join the party around my outside. He's, he's tried to send it around now, so it hasn't quite found it, but uh, it's not looking good. And we're only on lap six. And the race is already feeling like it's completely shot and gone. Like like Monaco almost. Like Monaco had a gearbox issue and I thought my race was over on lap two. It's lap six at the moment here in Russia. And I'm down to P9. And I can't see the light at the end of the tunnel for some good points today. Because I can't do much. Unlike the gearbox issue, I can't just drive slower uh, on the gear changes. And it will still work fine. The engine physically does not have the horsepower anymore. Because it's so worn out. Like, I think I think we're getting to 85% soon on the internal combustion engine. So as we come in for our pit stop, um, it's going to be a bit of a long afternoon here for the second half of this race. A one stop, obviously, so race strategy won't help us out today. So that's our one and only stop. So I really am by myself there in no man's lands trying to survive this race now to the end of the Grand Prix. I can't tell we made a bit of an earlier stop compared to others or uh, a lot of people in the midfield have uh, started on soft tyres. But we're down to P16 then. And we've got Magnussen, who's actually behind me in P17. He's coming down the main straight there on my left-hand side. Actually, as I come into turn two, it's going to be very, very close there on the left-hand side. There he goes. And we just stay ahead of him there. So Magnussen, with an earlier stop, has managed to get up into P17. We're P16. Obviously, Magnussen had a penalty himself for the grid. But at this point, there is no point me holding on Magnussen. So into the next corner, I just think I am going to let him through. Lift off there, and I'm going to be a good teammate. I am technically the first driver, I think, oh, due to my contract. But there is no point holding Magnussen up. And we've seen so far this season, his AI is good. His AI can actually go and score some great points here today still with a not broken car. So I've let him go on purpose. And so now we're just chugging along then in P18. We're going to come out side by side with Verstappen. But whilst I do that and overtake Verstappen coming out of the pit lane, Ricardo has overtaken me into turn two though he locks up forces me to lock up as well as I get brake checked by him effectively and so I go behind Verstappen as well so both Red Bulls I don't know if Ricardo meant that to kind of block me off to get Verstappen ahead of me but I'm not finding it a great race at the moment as we're second last now in this Grand Prix with Sainz last obviously though 
people, a lot of people yet to make the pit stops. I feel like a lot of people who got penalties that were knocked down and they could choose their tyre, chose to go on ultra soft tyres on purpose, and now they're going on to the hardest compound of tyre there. So, uh, or vice versa, just doing something a little bit different. Meanwhile, now we've got the two Red Bulls fighting. Ricardo around the outside of Verstappen. Verstappen, that is actually making the move down the inside. Ricardo's defending to the outside there, which is a bit, uh, a bit of a weird strategy there, Ricardo. But nonetheless, Verstappen gets him. But ahead of him is Magnussen chasing down the Mercedes car there. So that bodes well for us at least. And ahead of him is Hulkamow. Then Kimi Raikkonen. And then you've got uh, some of the Toro Rosa cars and some of the cars yet to make pit stops like the Force India and also the Williams and Alfa Romeo Sauber's there. But ahead of them will be Sebastian Vettel going pretty damn well from pole position, of course. Eventually, though, of course, those people that are yet to make pit stops did make pit stops. So on lap 14, we're up into P10 of this Grand Prix with one single point to our name if we finish it like this. But then Carlos Sainz comes and tries to ruin the party. He was in last place. I was in second last. And now we're battling for P, uh, P10 and P11 here. We're side by side through turn two. But you can see how bad the engine is now. We've got the internal combustion engine, the MGUH, and also the turbocharger, all very worn, uh, all above 70%. And then the, uh, the internal combustion engine's over 80%. But we go uh, and do a lovely, lovely switchback move there on Carlos Sainz and absolutely embarrass him as he tries to overtake us into turn three. He had it, and then he just went too deep, and I swooped down the inside and got that place back. And so uh, on lap uh, 16 now, we've got the Ferrari of Vettel, who's made another pit stop from his lead of the Grand Prix. So Vettel and Ferrari have had a very poor strategy there. I don't know why they've done that. He was leading the way, I'm pretty sure, but now he's re-overtaken us. He's in P11. He's on hypers, I think that was, but um, yeah, I don't know why he's done a two-stop there. So now it's Bottas that leads the way from Kimi Raikkonen in second place. Third place is still Sergio Perez. So from that initial getaway, he's done really well to keep that. Then P4 is Nico Hulkenberg doing a stunning job. Hamilton tries to catch him up after a slow start, obviously with a grip penalty as well. Magnussen then behind Hamilton doing a fabulous job. Like I said, there, there was good reason why I let Magnussen go because then behind him is the two Red Bulls and Soffel van Dorn. And speaking about Van Dorn, his teammate Alonso now fancies a pop at Espen Ocon around the outside. These guys are scrapping away for what will be P12 here. So I was a bit worried that Ocon was maybe going to come and overtake me due to the pace that Perez has shown. But Fernando Alonso uh, fighting Ocon like this and lost a bit of time. But those two fighting will actually help me keep P11 then. Science has fallen off a little bit there. And eventually he will actually fall behind all these cars with some sort of issue on the car. So it does mean we can bring it home in P11 here. But Bottas wins the Russian Grand Prix. And uh, I'm afraid to say it's been a bit of a lacklustre one today. And uh, it didn't get any better due to my engine issues. I think the race would have been a little bit straightforward for us anyway with a one-stop. But uh, that engine really was a big, big disaster for us. And we've, we've trundled home, limped home like Monaco. But kind of even worse than Monaco. Because Monaco, we still end up getting good points. But... We have not done that today, and it's uh, it's uh, it's real annoyance. But that's just my fault of uh, not changing the engine. That's the end of the race. We'll see you in part for me. So Mercedes have won it, and what a great race it was! And Anthony Davidson, give me your thoughts. How did they accomplish this result? Well, I'd, I'd say it's just raw pace, plain and simple. I mean. We could sit here and talk about strategy all day, the overtaking, looking after the tyres, but at the end of it all, if you want to win, you need a package that's got the speed over everyone else, and that's exactly what they had today. And here are our podium drivers today after that excellent race. They've excelled here as they so often do, and it's a well-deserved victory. Mercedes then are on top today. So even after what was a really difficult Grand Prix, I think we can still be positive in terms of Magnussen did well there. Uh, not as well as maybe I hoped, but you can see that obviously Hulkenberg did really well. And Perez as well was a big, big surprise for me in this race. So I think that affected it a little bit there. And maybe our car just didn't go well around Russia. So Ricardo does overtake myself uh, with the place he got there in the points. But you can see we're still ahead of Magnussen by a couple of points. And as a whole, we're still doing enough to be ahead of Red Bull Racing in the Constructors, which in the end is really the big thing. But it's close. There's only a couple of points 
points in it. So it is really going to be a long scrap now for the last five rounds to round 21 to actually keep this third place. It's, it's a big achievement if we pull it off, but it is going to be a big, big tall order because the Red Bulls are only getting stronger and stronger in terms of in the last couple of episodes, uh, they've looked a little bit better. And also in the last couple of episodes, even though we've been up there as well, we've also had a bit more of an up and down kind of set of races. And also lately with the chaos, you just don't know what's going to happen really in terms of, uh, uh, you know, are you going to have a DNF? Are you going to have an engine failure? Is there going to be a crash? Are you going to lose out with a, a virtual safety car or a safety car or whatever? But either way, we get an extra 600 points then for completing our objective of uh, getting four, fourth or above. We got that obviously for Singapore. We got third place there. So uh, we've met that objective in four races uh, or, or, or less. So we did, we did that at Singapore. So, so an extra 600 there is going to be really, really useful, uh, obviously, as we go towards the end of the season, saving up resource points. But now we're going to look ahead to a contract negotiation, probably one of the last ones before right at the end of the season this will be. It's time for us to renegotiate your contract. Here you can see the current deal. Once negotiations begin, the team will make you an offer. You can accept if you like, but I strongly suggest we push for better terms. So on the bottom right, you can see what the value of our current contract is and where our value now stands. So we've got a lot to grow. So we're going to go ahead and remove the pit stop efficiency as per usual. I just don't personally think it's very useful until you get to that finite kind of, uh, you know, margins in the championship, I guess. But we're going to go for level three on the race upgrades there. So it's going to reduce everything by one week. So minor, major and ultimate upgrades now from now on will take one week less if we get this contract. We're going to have level one on simultaneous development and we're going to have level two on the race bonus. We're going to become the first driver or maintain our first driver status. We're going to bump down the qualifying by one just so it's not too high but we're going to keep the team goal hard and I think that should be a contract that I think they should well and truly accept because the value that we've got on the bottom right there I feel like that's such a big leap from the contract we have now that we can get away with it. So let's have a look and see what they say. Our proposal has been accepted. The new contract will take effect from the next race weekend. So we've been very, very successful. What did I say? We almost got it bang on where our line was for our value there with the contract. So, so close on the bottom right. So really happy with that. So minus one on every upgrade there. We've got the race bonus on level two and we've got also the simultaneous development. So going into next season, if it truly is going to be a case of the durability is the only thing that's getting reset for our R&D tree going to season two, uh, we're going to be uh, in a prime position. So not only start off with a good foundation for season two, but then rapidly improve the car even further in the couple, first couple of rounds to actually then really fight the top guys legitimately but we're going to now uh, fix that uh, upgrade on the engine power obviously it failed for this episode the major engine update so we're going to get that and that should actually get us ahead of uh, the likes of Williams there and finally we'll have a bit of a kind of you know engine oomph I mean we've had a pretty good engine anyway this season but it's going to be even better but you can see we've done so so much work on the chassis front here and I think I'm going to try one last upgrade on the chassis and do this last minor uh, brakes update and then that will probably be it from me. So I'm saying from now on, I don't think we'll be doing too many upgrades. Maybe one or two more miners, but that will be it, I think, for me, especially from the chassis side of things for this season one. And now we'll just focus on saving points for the end of the season. But you can see I, I, I've been really proud of how much work we've done the chassis, like all the way to the end on the middle uh, tree part of, of, of it. And then we've also ventured into the brake portion of it. So really happy with that progress. We've got three updates coming for Japan next episode. So that's going to be a big, big jump up in performance that could even see us look on the right hand side could see us jump ahead of Red Bull. If you look at the chart there, we're already pretty damn close to Red Bull, but we could jump ahead of Red Bull for the first time this season on paper uh, at the Japanese Grand Prix. And you've got to say also, look at that, McLaren and Renault have also joined us on the same trajectory from Singapore to Russia on the improvement. So if they also improve, you're going get, to get McLaren and Renault also, you know, if they have a bit of luck here and there, they could also beat Red Bulls on their day. So like I said, in, I think I said in Singapore as well, it's really cool to see all the teams are actually genuinely closing up eventually and so season two I think is going to be set up to be absolutely bonkers with so many teams so so close together but if you guys did enjoy this episode then hit that like button let me know what you thought in the comments below if you aren't around here you can subscribe for weekly fallen on content and as you can see yes I will be changing my engine updates now so for Japan we're going to have a clean slate so that's going to be nice a nice fresh engine that's going to be good to actually have horse horses in our engine to have the horsepower but uh, yeah till then guys hope you enjoy the rest of your day goodbye